Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, we bring you the most discussed topics related to the current situation and how they are affecting or will affect the economy. I think that 2023, at least for the start of the year, will be a big bust. Maybe, much like the A-team always won in the end, this year could finish well, for markets and the economy, but it will start with pain. Not much help from the bond markets. I'm a bond bull and expect a risk-off trade early in the year, but bonds just aren't going to help portfolios or the economy enough to stem the tide. The wealth effect, on individuals, companies, and governments, will weigh on the economy and markets. The amount of wealth destruction was large by historical standards and was more circular than in previous bouts of wealth destruction. Unlike weebles, which wobble, but don't fall down, economic data will fall down. Consumers and jobs, two areas that have given many people reasons to support an optimistic outlook, will succumb to the same problems that the rest of the economy is facing and it will finally show up in the data. There is a chance for some geopolitical respite, but globalization in 2023 and beyond will never go back to where it was in 2017. The valuation revaluation is not done, and that will reduce whatever earnings, or free cash flow, we have to multiply these metrics by to calculate valuations. Credit contraction is a risk. Those are the main points driving much of this very bleak outlook, but just because it is bleak, doesn't mean that it is pessimistic because bad things can and do happen. There are some ongoing themes in last year's work that set the stage for some of this analysis. We had several non-traditional factors that drove inflation, many of which are gone. Using responses that work for traditional inflation when we have a unique fact set this time around is going to lead to large and difficult policy mistakes. See rise and fall of inflation risk factors which examines the roles of the Fed, stimulus, supply chains, war, and disruption on inflation. 2 plus 2 equals 5 explores why the Fed seems to be looking at data very weirdly and the problems that these views are likely to cause. The path to Q1 deflation, lays out how this comes together to shock the system. Deflation is not healthy when it is caused by an economy hitting a wall. These are important pieces of the pain outlook, but they are not the only elements. Even if you disagree with the above, there is plenty of wiggle room to come to the pain conclusion and those arguments just help make the case stronger. Relationships with China have changed and aren't going to revert to what passed as normal anytime soon. It isn't just at the government level, where national security concerns are paramount but at the company level where there is a threat to IP and supply chains, there is also unwillingness to truly provide open and equal access to the domestic economy. All these factors have left C-suites working on alternatives to China. It is almost sad, but true, that by the time markets and the mainstream media catch up to Academy's view on China, our view will have become more negative. However, the gap is finally narrowing for most investors and corporations. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. The Beijing Olympics as cultural bookends is a thought piece but looks at the changes since China's coming out party at the Beijing Summer Olympics and their going away party at the Winter Olympics last year. Topics include the reassertion of the Communist Party, digital yuan, debt diplomacy, economic colonization, military expansion, and the real estate bubble. While that report is almost a year old, it sets the tone for much of how people should think about China. The recentralization of China, August 2021, set the stage for the move from seeing China as a strategic competitor, December 2019, to more of an enemy across the globe. China's zero COVID policy. I dismissed the reopening as being a big deal on national TV just a couple weeks ago, Supply chain issues have been largely dealt with and the last thing this economy needs is more cheap goods. However, it is still interesting that it failed to help markets rally. Maybe that is because few people want to risk traveling to China at this stage, getting COVID there seems precarious at best in terms of treatment. Maybe it is because China's importance to our economy has been greatly diminished. The full story hasn't played out here, but I remain in the camp that China's reopening is only helpful at the margins given how companies and countries have adapted to the past few years of behavior. Again, this foundation isn't critical in coming to the pain conclusion, but it is an important building block. I want to be bullish on bonds despite the fact that this is rapidly becoming a consensus view. I'm fully committed to the high probability of a risk-off trade that brings bond yields lower and takes stocks below their 2022 lows. Yet, things seem off in the bond world. It is somewhat difficult, at least from this seat, to put a finger on exactly what is wrong, but let's highlight a few potential risks to the bond world. These are primarily risks to the treasury market, 
but many of those risks would cause problems for credit especially if the economy slows as rapidly as I expect it to, it is already slowing rapidly based on PMI data and other reports. Will foreign buyers of dollar-denominated debt continue to buy? This question first got some serious attention as dollar strength and FX volatility made it more difficult for foreigners to buy dollar-denominated debt and hedge out the FX risk, primarily a treasury and investment-grade bond issue. With Japan starting to increase the target levels on their bonds, will we see more buying of yen-denominated bonds versus buying dollar-denominated bonds with the associated FX hedging? I am a strong believer that the 0% bound is nonlinear. Basically, a number of market participants will do a lot to avoid zero or near zero returns and will quickly revert to simpler strategies once they can achieve even a modicum of yield. Large slash sophisticated institutions don't think that way, but many smaller institutions seem to. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available, and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.